So what we'll do um, now is just summarise that by saying that generally speaking in these larger centres you're seeing a greater negative change. Now one of the reasons for that is that these large centres, and if I take Nottingham for example, the DCLG, the government's retail core definition, takes in a massive area. Now that area, if you speak to the council, will have changed. So if you're looking at um, a, a retail core in most cities, you're probably looking at five or six streets, a shopping centre and five or six prime streets. But we're not just doing those five or six streets, we're probably doing 50 or 60. Okay, so whilst we'll get a kicking, and I'll probably get knocked down by a taxi when I leave here from Nottingham or Rotherham or Sheffield, the answer is we are covering these other areas which people may choose to ignore, which are now called secondary or tertiary, okay, or local shopping provision. So that's, you know, the reality of what we see uh, in the data. Now, when we look at the uh, dynamics here, and apologies, it's a bit dark here, what I just want to do is just look at a couple of points and say, okay, well, how is this changing? We've got the internet coming up, knocking on the door of 10% of retail sales. We've got supermarkets massively increasing their non-food retail space and taking a greater share of non-food retail sales. And then we've got the normal activity of bricks and mortar retailers. But what you'll see here is the differences which are happening at the national and at the centre level. So the composition and the exposure, so if you're a small centre here, the exposure to comparison goods retailers, your shoe shops, clothes shops, and all that kind of stuff, is lower than if you're a larger, and particularly if you're a medium-sized centre. So these medium centres, which I keep banging on about, are essentially competing with the larger centres. And we know that retailers want larger footprints in larger centres, and therefore it's likely you're going to move from a medium-sized centre and concentrate in a larger size centre. So all these guys in the shadow of the bull ring, in the shadow of High Cross, Westfield, etc., they're the ones who are likely to be most impacted. And you can see that regionally uh, these differences happen. You can look at Greater London and think, crikey, I thought Greater London was all shops, but you can see that the service, so your nail bars, hairdressers, beauty, and your leisure, your restaurants and everything else is a key part to it. And when you look at centres which are healthy, they demonstrate a good mix because people don't just go to shop. They go for entertainment, they go to eat, they go for something more than shopping. And so any centre which is highly dependent solely on shops is likely to fail, is uh, my take on it. So if you then start to look at um, the one that no one really talks about, but it's the elephant in the room, 64% um, of, uh, of our data essentially across the board is independence and here out of these towns that we've been looking at for this report it's even higher. Now who are these independents? Well they're people to us who have five or less shops but they're the majority and funnily enough they're the people who have either gone under because they had a bad business or they're starting to thrive. Butchers and bakers everyone said supermarkets would kill them but the one thing that supermarkets can't do well is bread, meat and fish. However, look at the latest campaign that Morrisons are running. What are they talking about? Your local fishmonger and your local baker. So they've cottoned on to that and they're trying to do something about it. But if you do have that unique offer as an independent and a product you can't get on the web and service, you'll do very well. And I can speak personally on this. We've got a, I live in a tiny little place and there's a little bookshop which opened where a, um, the threshers failed. And the good thing about it is I can go and stuff my children in there and say, you go and talk to Debbie about books for your age. And she's brilliant. She gets some reading. She enthuses them. I can't get that on Amazon. Can't get it anywhere else. And I'm happy to pay, you know, what the price on the book rather than 50% off to get that. And I think that's what independents do well and will always do well. And they have to realise it. And whether that's through Mary Porter's doing her stuff or anything else is, is to be said. But it, it is important to recognise that a lot of these centres are either multiple or independent um, heavy and that balance is absolutely key and that balance will change because these multiples are wanting to reduce the number of stores plus the location so most of them want to be in a shopping centre or retail park where they can control everything around them a high street you cannot control there are too many stakeholders so where does this 
leave us all. This slide just quickly sort of sums up everything I've talked about and talks about the sizes of what we're looking about and the changes. But most importantly, look at this um, leisure offer in the large and the differences between the small and medium centres, but also look at the range. And I just really draw your attention that you can have an Aberdeen at 8.5%, yet you've got an, a Rotherham at 28%, and the extremes in the other areas. And, and this is what it's all about, and therefore it's not one size fits all when it comes to it. And therefore I think councils and MPs and all these people have to be sharper than ever before to identify what their town needs. You know, look at Ludlow. Ludlow is an amazing food festival now. People flock to Ludlow. But, you know, what can Rotherham do? It has to think of something. It has to create a music festival. It has to go a knitting festival. Something to bring people in which is unique. Otherwise, people just go away, and they will do. I saw this, fun enough, in uh, uh, Retail Week, Tim. You'll recognise the ad, no doubt. Is, uh, this was the same publication of Retail Week. On one hand, it was saying McDonald's uh, leases for sale or to let. And on the other hand, it says we're hungry to open 30 new restaurants a year. Now, without sort of stating the obvious, look at them. High Street, the Borough, High Street, the Lynx, High Street, Kingsway. All in town, locations for McDonald's. And where do they want to go? They want to go out of town. Okay? The same with KFC. They all love the drive through uh, that's what it's all into. Look at the amount of petrol station retailing, how that's taken off. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about people in their cars. Now, the question, which will be interesting, at petrol and diesel going up to 130, 140 or whatever, will that change? You know, I think it begs an interesting question of the future. Is this an opportunity for high streets to reclaim by saying, come in here and we can provide all of it and you don't have to get in your car? But you'll probably get charged a fortune to park your car, but that's Im irrelevant. So just finishing off now before I finalise with a bit of um, politics, these are the kind of things which I think are the key drivers. You know, this bank lending and refinancing, and people on the panel will talk about that, but there's a lot of, there are a lot of uh, property and leases out there which need refinancing. Will they get it? Banks control a lot of retailers out there, and what are they going to do? These rising energy and commodity costs, they're all obvious. We've got the inflation figures coming out, no surprise, at 4%. <laughs> We've got this whole multiple... So the multi-channel. Now look at Groupon. Groupon wasn't around two years ago. It's around today. And look at what uh, Google was offering to pay for it. And that's just another thing of channel to retailers, which just didn't exist, you know, six months ago in this country. You've got this store number and format I mentioned, the supermarkets. The retailer space requirements. Look at the investment made into logistics. If you're a retailer, you want to have everything you've possibly got on offer that people can buy. It's no good turning up saying, sorry, we've only got shoes in size 12, but I tell you what, come back next week and you can buy a pair in size 8. You've lost your customer. So that is the core. When you get people under your, under your, into your shop, you've got to be able to service them properly. You've then got this debate about the high street, shopping centre, retail park. And look at Next, OK? They were the first movers in this. Look at how well they've done. Look at how badly M&S have done. They've suddenly woken up to out of town and they're looking to go out of town. But they, were, they, they didn't jump on the bandwagon early enough and they're now realising they should have done. You've got the whole rent rates debate which will uh, go on uh, and you can look at some of the deals happening are crazy and people were just saying this morning that, and I'm sure the panel will talk about it, that some of the, the, you know, the deals being done out there just aren't realistic and therefore how many rent reviews will it take to realise your investment? Those development pipelines I mentioned on that, they've all been cancelled, okay? Wolverhampton, who we work closely with, the Summer Road development was going to be the saviour of Wolverhampton, cancelled, okay? Rotherham, Rochdale, you know, what's Rotherham going to do now? That money's gone and I can't see it coming back, okay? And these are just four, okay, which are out there. You've got the empty rates relief, I won't go on about taxation, the VAT, you've got this carry-on going on in the Channel Islands. If you're game, being able to sell something under a certain rate and therefore saving the VAT, immediately you've got a 20% discount on your uh, competitors. You've got the interest rates inflation. And the significance of retail centres changing. Therefore, you know, with the bull ring and something, is Solihull so significant? Okay, probably not. Um, the tourism pound, so your Edinburgh's, your London's, your Stratford's, 
they will probably survive and do better. The Chinese and the Germans still think of this country as wonderful Shakespeare and lovely British High Street, but the reality is that's changing. But they've got the money to spend, and therefore, if I was a town centre, I'd be really encouraging tourists like No Tomorrow to come into my centre. And lastly, sales used to happen twice a year. Now they're always on. So what do you do about it? TM Lewin, you know, they have one shop which they have to put a full price for one week, and then they're just in sales all year round. Noticed by my shirt. <laughs> right, the last thing I just want to show you, which won't be um, uh, any great news to you, we mapped a whole load of MPs' constituencies. On the left, you can see the breakdown of the constituencies, red Conservative, uh, sorry, red Labour, uh, blue Conservative and the yellow in there. And you can see very much a bit of a north-south apart from London. On the right-hand side, green's low vacancy, medium sort of average, and red high. And look at that correlation between the constituencies and the political parties. And if I take it one stage further, what we did is we took the councils, and if you suddenly turn around and say, well, let's look at these councils um, by the majority, these are the conservative councils. So a majority of councils are conservative. It may be uh, a coalition, but the majority are conservative. Look at the spread uh, that they've got there. Birmingham, Nottingham and Margate. Uh, and now if we go to uh, Labour, uh, you can start to see that you've got a greater concentration in the larger centres, but again, a very similar problem uh, and a spread. So all in all here, you've got a political dynamic to what we've been talking about. And I think, you know, the big question for all the politicians out there is, you know, what can they do about it and do they really realise it? Because I fundamentally believe that this country does not realise what shop vacancy is, yet in Scotland they're spending 60 million on it, in England they're spending 5 million on it, and in Wales. So you're getting these different political dynamics. Scotland's doing okay because they're pumping a lot of money into it from the Scottish Assembly, Parliament up there. The Welsh Assembly's doing the same, but obviously England's under a different setup. So those political dynamics will come into play, public sector employment being one just case uh, in point. And that's all I have. Thank you uh, very much.